part of me is like, what if I, you know, forget about things someday in the future? So I was like, I need to write this down. So that was the whole reason behind it. And I still like this idea of documenting and like putting your life on paper. So that's always been the the North Star. It's the Inspiration Place podcast with artist Miriam Shulman. Welcome to the Inspiration Place podcast, an art world insider podcast for artists by an artist, where each week we go behind the scenes to uncover the perspiration and inspiration behind the art. And now, your host, Miriam Shulman. Well, hello there, my passion maker. This is Miriam Shulman, your curator of inspiration, and you're listening to episode 194 of the Inspiration Place podcast. I'm so grateful that you're here. Today, we're talking about how this artist made a career out of her love for travel. You're going to learn how she publishes art technique books and how she manages her mind for greater productivity. So before we get into today's episode, I wanted to make sure you got your hands on my mindset playlist. Whether you consider yourself an aspiring artist or you're already in the trenches making a go of this, the better you manage your mind, the more success you're going to have. Whether that's creating your art or selling it. So I've created a playlist just for you. To get your hands on the mindset playlist, go to shulmanart.com forward slash playlist. And now on with the show. Today's guest is an artist, author, and creator. But most of all, she loves to journal and document about her life and creative musings. Over the years, she's pursued different creative passions from writing and illustrating best-selling books, freelancing for brands, running a small business selling books and stationery, giving talks and hosting workshops on hand lettering and creativity, to building a community of artists and makers. Currently, she creates and produces videos on YouTube and Instagram, manages a team for the Always Be Creating community page, hosts monthly journaling hangouts on Patreon, and is sharing more about her upcoming book, The Art of the Travel Journal, which is available now on presale. And with her always be creating mantra, she hopes to inspire others to unlock their creative potential and move forward with their creative journey. Please welcome to the Inspiration Place, Abby C. Well, hello, Abby. Welcome to the show. Hi, Miriam. So nice to meet you and so nice to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have you. So the reason I first invited you was because you were one of the artists participating in the sketchbook revival, which I was participating in as well. And then all morning, I've just been watching your YouTube videos and I have a (laughs) million questions. What, What is the name of your YouTube channel so our listeners can check that out? Yeah, so my YouTube channel is still my name. It's Abby C. So you can check it out. Tell us about your YouTube videos. Do you edit and produce them all yourself or do you have help with that? I would say like 90%. I do think of, I really like making videos. It's, uh, I'm a late bloomer with like YouTube videos. I've always been like an Instagram girl. But for YouTube, I found that when you're trying to convey a message like with journaling or teaching, it just makes more sense to do it on video. So YouTube became this avenue for that. I currently have an editor helping me out with more of the vlogs and other content. But for journaling videos, journal with me videos, it's mostly just me editing away and like talking nonstop on camera about my process. And what about the trailer, though, for your new book? Did you edit that yourself too? Oh, no, my editor did that. But I try to be on top of the creative direction, like how we want it to look like. Like I want it to be a montage. I want to talk about this, that. I really think I'm a frustrated director slash producer. So that's how I try to put those like skills together through YouTube, hopefully. So, yeah. Oh, no, you're you're a master. It it, it was really good. I looked at that as like, okay. This is what I have to aspire to. I'm happy to give you tips. So yeah, yeah. We will, we will just we chat will, away. We will talk about that. So I have a book coming out next year. I saw. Congrats in advance. Thank so excited you. for that. 
It's a long process. I want to talk to you about your book. First of all, before we get into your books, and there's so many things I want to talk to you about. Like I made just like a list. Okay. Let's define art journaling and which term do you prefer? Because I know some people prefer visual journaling, some like art journaling. Which term do you prefer, Abby? I mostly just use creative journaling. And part of that is travel journaling, I would say. So not art journaling, not visual journaling, travel journaling. Is that right? You can also say art journaling. I'm just more used to saying creative journaling, I guess. Perfect. Okay, good. Creative journaling it is then. All right. And you got started doing this just for yourself, right? Exactly. Yeah. I was one of those kids who did like, you know, Dear Diary kind of style. And then this is more of a like refined version of it as I got older. And it was more like not private, more of like creative endeavors kind of thing. So. And you started when you were how old? I actually know the answer. I'm pretending not to know. 13, (laughs) I think. Yeah, that's what you said on the video. No, I, I was like, it was so funny because I wanted to, part of me is like, what if I, you know, forget about things someday in the future? So I was like, I need to write this down. So that was the whole reason behind it. And I still like this idea of documenting and like putting your life on paper. So that's always been the the North Star. Okay, so Abby, when you started journaling when you were 13, when did you start adding illustrations in? I think. Sometime in like getting into college because I used to have planner, you know, when you get in college, you get a planner and you try to be more organized. And you, I started to use planners for my schedule, but also I started to doodle on them. So it became like a, a place to do art, basically. So it kind of evolved from there. I think, though, with stationery, it came in later when I discovered Hobonichi and this whole idea of like, Japanese journaling, Japanese planners and stationery. That's how everything sort of like shifted and it became to what it is now. Mm. So my daughter, so I have a daughter who's 24 now and she always used her planners yeah. to doodle. And then the pages that have passed, you know, like the, the months or the weeks that have passed, mm-hmm. she would put washi tape. She would cover up the oh, things so she didn't want to see. And then there, if there were like little blank areas, she would put a quote in there. So yeah, yeah her process hasn't really changed over, over the years. Like her journals now look very similar to what they did five years ago, but she still does that. And sometimes she'll even buy more than one journal, I mean planner. And this year she couldn't decide which one, but then she ended up filling one of them up. It's like, oh, I can't use this as my planner anymore. It's like it became just the journal. So it's so Which is great. That, yeah. All right. And so now I know you you add illustration. So that came later. And then what about pasting in like souvenirs and, tr- you mm-hmm. know, travel documents and tickets? And when did that enter your process? I think that entered when I was, when did I get into traveling? I think this was like when I graduated uh, college, I started to, you know, I was like, wow, what is travel? I really like the idea of going to different places and the first thing that caught my eye is like, you know, you see all these like tickets. What are you supposed to do with them? Receipts, maps, all these little memorabilia. And I like taking them home. So eventually it became a habit for me to just journal about them and put them on paper. And like these are like I call them paper trail. So these mm. are actual paper trails. For example, I went to Singapore. This is my Singapore paper trail. So I would say it's very inspired by Andy Warhol's time capsules. You know, he has boxes. I don't have boxes. I have envelopes per country. They're filed together. And of course, I would take some of them out and just journal about them. And it's just so nice to see. I think it also comes from my background because I also used to do design work and I really love graphics. So this is how I try to make sense of you know, oh, this country has really nice tickets or this other country has a very detailed map or how they design is very um, interesting to me. It's something that spoke to me. So I always get the brochures and I keep them and I use them also as visual reference. Okay. So I understand you're from the Philippines. Is that right? Yes. And when did you start traveling? Was that with your family or, or when you were older by yourself? I travel a lot with my family. We we always make sure to go somewhere once a year, like a family trip. So I think that really like enriched my idea of what travel was. I think we went to Europe like very early on and I was like, 
wow, Europe is so amazing. So I also went to US very early on in my life. And I was like, I want to go back, you know. So these kinds of motivations really push me to travel, to really explore what's out there and really be more aware of other places. Okay. So when I was on your YouTube channel, I saw you have these really beautiful notebooks that you use. They're Mm -hmm. brown. I'm trying to describe it for people who can't, you know, who are listening, who can't see. Okay. So they're about the size of, I would say, a business envelope. They have a brown cover and the inside are blank pages or line pages. Now I can't remember what I'd seen. They come in different styles depending on your preference, actually. So they're actually called Traveler's Notebook. It's a brand. It's a Japanese brand. And you can buy the inserts and the covers. So it's a fully customizable system. And apparently, a lot of people love using it for planning, for journaling. I personally use it as to, of course, the name is Traveler's Notebook. So I use it as a Traveler's Notebook. And so that's always been like my go-to format. It's also very, you know, it's slim, right? So it's really nice to fit in your bag take around with you when you're traveling and exploring new places. There are also some inserts inside that have pockets. So if you have these maps, you can put them everything there, the cards, the tags, you have extra change, you can put it in the pockets that are inside. And so it makes for this whole like portable travel journal that you can really take along with you. I love that. And I guess you could make one yourself with yeah. pattern paper if you if you really exactly. were feeling ambitious. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand that you've published some of your past journals as... I um, did. Okay, tell us about that. Are they actually physical? Are they e-zines? How are they published? They're published as zines. This was funny because when I decided to do this, the pandemic happened. So I have had like archives of, I think I have maybe like 15 to 20 of these like traveler's notebooks in different countries. And I was like, wait, I want to show other people what my journals look like. And instead of giving them my journal, of course, I can't do that. I decided to scan some of my favorite pages and turn them into a zine. So this zine acts as like a a little visual diary of my trip and a little itinerary also, I would say, because these are places that I really like. For example, in Japan, I have I have Tokyo, Berlin, and New York. And these really chronicle a lot of my experiences in different countries and, you know, stuff I stick in everything. And it's just so nice because the feedback I always get when customers buy those zines is they say, it's like I'm traveling with you or I'm seeing a part of you through these journals and through these zines. And these zines, so zine being short for magazine. Mm Mm-hmm. Are they physical? Like they arrive in... Yes. Oh, beautiful. Yes. I am planning to do more soon. I have to send something your way. I'm going to send you something. But yeah, they are physical. I thought of doing e-zines, but also like the experience would be totally different, yeah. right? Because this is like having it, you know, I really, I'm a big supporter of print. So it's like anything that's like physical and like tangible is really special to me. Well, people really crave that. Exactly. They really crave the physicality, especially with the pandemic in the past few years and the isolation, people crave it even more. They need something that's tactile that they can hold in their hands. And we're so missing the travel experience as well. Mm-hmm. How did that impact your creativity, Abby? Did impact a lot. I'm trying to be more like, at first I was denying it. Right. But I we realized, all were. <laughs> right, we all had that face like, oh, you know, this will be over soon. But Right. We were so delusional. I thought it'd be over in three months. I was like, (laughs) don't worry. We'll be we'll be out and about by the summer. (laughs) Two years ago. Exactly. Because before that, I have traveled extensively the years before that. So I think that really took a toll on my creative. I would say my creative energy in general, because a fun fact about me is like usually when I work on a book, the months that are I'm working on a book, I would book a random trip somewhere. It's it's just out of habit that I do this. I think I do believe that artists really need to immerse in different environments for a certain period of time, right? Because we get so much inspiration from our environment. And this is so interesting to me. And so when I had to stay home, I mean, I am an introvert and I'm homebody, but having to stay in one place is really, really hard at least for me, it was a really hard experience. 
I think the only thing that helped me like escape through that was like I would watch TV shows that were set in the 60s or like TV shows that were set in a travel mood. So I was like, okay, I feel like I'm traveling with these people. And it has been really difficult to like just get ideas going. And because the like I, I have a bad habit of being like, I'm an extra workaholic. I would say super workaholic. What is the m- mega workaholic, basically? So I like to use the I, word obsessed. Obsessed, yeah. Obsessed. I think that, that, I think because, that, that pretty much sums it up, yeah. Because yeah, you, don't don't no, you don't have to say workaholic. You're just obsessed. I'm obsessed with work. With, the, no, with your art. I'm, yeah, with, with my art, exactly. So then I had more time to do that. And I think that really was great. But also, like, if, you know, travel would have filled that void. Right, because then I couldn't, you, you weren't filling up your exactly. well. You're only pulling just out like, of the well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel you. (laughs) It was hard for me too. Our guest today loves to travel journal, which is just another way of keeping a journal, or some people like to call it an art journal. Some people call it a visual journal. And if you're curious about what supplies I use in my own journals, I've got a freebie that you're going to love. It's my own personal list of favorite art supplies that I use for art journaling. To get your hands on it, go to shulmanart.com forward slash journal. And now on with the show. Okay, so I know I'm skipping around a lot because there's just so much I want to ask you and I want to make sure I get to all of it. One thing that I put this on the top of my list, one thing I love that you talk about, Abby, is you refer to Future Abby. Yeah. I like to think of past Abby, present Abby, future Abby. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about future Abby two years ago. You were imagining a future Abby. Is that right? What? I was. I was. I had different plans back then also. So I mean, now I'm, I'm currently in Berlin now as we're recording this, right? So I just moved here. So I think it's the first time I'm seeing it on podcast episode. I am staying here for the next few years and I got my permit as an artist here in Berlin. So it has always been my dream to move somewhere. I just wasn't sure back then where, but this is the place currently. And I always like to think about future Abby because I actually got that reference from How I Met Your Mother, <laughs> like okay. the sitcom. Okay, yeah, I think I'm was not like, familiar with that pop culture reference. So it's okay. The only thing I get is like, I sometimes will tell my kids like, you know, future Seth, <laughs> think about mm-hmm. future Seth is not going to want to not have this. So my, my, my son is 21, but it's sometimes mm-hmm. they, you know, what we all do. We all revert back yeah. to what we were like when we were 15. That's true. Especially people from the creative world who may have Mm -hmm. some ADD tendencies like my family. Okay, continue. (laughs) Future Abby. Tell us about Future Abby. Yeah, I I had envisioned Future Abby to be more, I would say, like independent and more creative and to travel more. So I think that's what I'm trying to live out now (laughs) in the present. Yeah. And so have you been able to ease back into travel since borders are starting to open somewhat? Have you incorporated? I know Just you- about to. It's It's been like uh, the rules here have been like changing every few weeks. So I'm I'm trying to be more like, wait, are we allowed? Are we not allowed and everything? So hopefully in the summer, I'm planning a few trips here and there and getting to explore parts of Germany first. And I think that's something I'm really looking forward to. I have not been traveling for two-ish years and it's been so different definitely so I'm really looking forward to it that's great okay we were talking about well we weren't talking about I was thinking about how we stay on task and stay organized because that's something that I work on and my kids work on and you have a technique that you use that yes which I know you didn't make up but for those who don't know the Pomodoro method. So could you, Abby, explain to people what that is and how you use it? Sure. So the Pomodoro method is basically, I think it's a work sprint where you do a certain period of work minutes. Usually it's 25. I have a timer here. Actually, this is my Pomodoro timer. So I do 45 minutes though. So you can do a 25 minute deep work sprint 
And then you get like a five minute break or a 10 minute break. Or you can do a 30 minute or 45. For me, 45 works because, you know, creative work has like takes a lot of time. And I have been, I think I, I started doing Pomodoro Method last year, 2021. It was really helpful because I realized that I have a very limited attention span, especially when you're uh, when you're an artist. You have like so many things on your plate, or for me, I have so many tabs open, looking for inspiration, typing this out, doing this, and so having this like method has helped me center on what tasks I need to do in that specific time frame. So that has helped me like become more not not to say more productive, more of like getting things done better. And you have more time to do other things, make more art, right? Paint more. More mindful like, of the time that you're actually exactly. using. Yeah. So Pomodoro, I believe that stands for tomato. Is that right? Yeah, because it was um, the popular timer that was used before was the tomato timer, the one that's being used usually in the kitchen. So yeah. that's why it's called Pomodoro, which is a very fun fact. Perfect. Okay. So next I want to talk to you about publishing. Yes. So your first books were self-published, is that correct? No, they were published by a Philippine publisher. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it it was available widely in the Philippines, not really an international, but I had, I think, an Indonesian and Spanish publisher acquire some rights and then they translated it to their respective languages. But for the most part in the Philippines, it was published by Summit Books. They're a top publisher in the Philippines. So yeah, I have my books distributed and published through them in the Philippines. Okay. And now you're with, is it Quarry? Quarry or Quarry? Yeah, Quarry Books. Quarry, Quarry Books. They're yeah. a big deal. So those of you who they are unfamiliar with publishing, they put out most of those art books, all creative and art how-to books. How did you get involved with them? Oh, this was cool. So they saw, I asked my editor this because when I first met them in New York, I told them, so how did you find me? Because I am like way outside, like the other part of the world, right? I was living in the Philippines back then. And they said, oh, we saw your book that was published in the Philippines. And it was actually very successful we had like seven reprints of the book back home until now it's being reprinted and they said oh we saw you on instagram we saw your book and we thought that it would make sense that you come work for us and come write a book for us and that was the time actually before i did this whole like journaling thing i was doing more of lettering back then so then my first book was a hand lettering book i think it's under rockport which is also an imprint I'm sure you know these terms like so. I do, but our listeners might not know the term. Yeah. So what, So basically a publisher is the umbrella. And then mm-hmm. actually, I, you know, you may know this better than I do. My understanding yeah. is kind of weak. The imprints are like different sub companies. Exactly. Okay. The main publisher name is called Quarto. So that's Q-A-R-T-O, yes. right? And then they have different books under them, different imprints rather. Imprints are like sub brands that focus on a specific, type of book content. So you have Walter Foster, which is more like traditional painting, how to, and then you have Rockport. I I did work for Rockport because I think they had a lot of lettering based art technique, heavy books. And then the current one that I have is under Query. Query also has art technique books, but they're not super technical because when I used to do lettering, it was very step-by-step, right? You know, the fonts, the typography, design. So Quarry is more of art books in general that are more hobby-based. So these are all under the same company. They're just under a different imprint. So I hope that made sense to our listeners. I think it does. And then just in my world, so like my my book, Artpreneur, it's with HarperCollins, but the mm-hmm. imprint is HarperCollins leadership. Okay. And then there's a couple of different Harper Collins under that. So, you know, it's kind of like there's a, well, I'm thinking of an analogy, but the, sometimes the analogies I make make less sense than th- the thing. So we'll just move so on. So there are like, there are like fiction and nonfiction books as well, right? Yeah, I think. they do. They they yeah. have like a memoir section. I, I okay. forget what it's called, Harper Collins, something else, mm-hmm. you know, and then there's, they even have, and sometimes what happens is they'll acquire publishing company that has a completely different name, which I'm sure 
Quartro did the same thing. Like they buy up a company and the imprint yeah. still has the name of the old publisher. Okay. So you have the book on lettering. What is the name of your lettering book, Abby? It's still in print, right? Yes. Yes. It's called Hand Lettering A to Z. And then there is a workbook version of that if you want to do more of the, the exercises and drills. And then I have another book called The Complete Photo Guide to Hand Lettering and Calligraphy, which is more of like an extensive lettering and calligraphy book where, you know, the whole, the totality of what this is, like lettering, calligraphy, digital lettering is all in that book. So I have a total of three books with quarto. Okay. So does that include the new book? Is this the fourth book? Three books plus, yeah, this is the fourth book with quarto. And then back in the Philippines, I have like three books, I think. Honestly, I lost count already. Congratulations. It's a big deal. Thanks. Okay, so what we're going to do is in the show notes, and this is episode 194, I'm going Mm -hmm. to link to everything that we can that's on Amazon. Yes. That you have on there. So I know you have, is Always Be Creating was your last book. Is that correct? Yeah, that was my last book in the Philippines. I will put up a digital shop with the ebook. So maybe I could send you the link for that so that they can get a digital copy of that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we will have a link to anything you have on Amazon as mm-hmm. well as your website. And yes, you can thanks. find the the show notes are shulmanart.com forward slash 194. So okay. we'll make sure we have that. Sense. And Abby's next book, which she's going to tell us about next, is coming out in August of 2022. I believe... This is being published in May. I'll have to double check if it's May or June. I don't remember. But it doesn't matter, listener, because you can buy her book now. And I bet you have some extra goodies for people who pre-order. Is that right? Yes. We actually have some postcards and bookmarks. So if you are pre-ordering early and you are one of the first, I think, 200 of the pre-orders, you'll be able to get some happy mail sent your way from Quarto and the postcards and bookmarks are designed by me. So they're going to be like nice additions to your travel journaling book. Wow, that's a really great idea. I wonder if I can do that with my book, have some physical things. Okay, so I think we kind of put like the commercial for your book a little bit early because we didn't tell them what your book is about, which I think we can so guess. We can talk about, yeah. Yes. So first of all, tell us the title of the book and what it is that the reader is going to get out of this. So my upcoming book, it's entitled The Art of the Travel Journal. It's basically a little book that talks about travel journaling in that extent, like a very detailed extent, because Actually, it was so hard to think of like how to talk about travel journaling because so many people are doing it differently. And so for me, I remember my editor was just like, okay, Abby, just put out what you know and we're going to put it in this book. So it really comprises of travel journaling as a whole, like how to plan your trip, how to set up your materials. You know, there's so many things and so many tools that you can get, but which ones are fit for you, right? So I do talk about that in the book, as well as different techniques. So I do quite a lot of different things when it comes to documenting. I draw, I stick, you know, tickets and all these things. And there are some themed sections in the book where I I share like, okay, if you're going to draw about architecture, here's what you should do. Or if you're going to document about your trip highlights or a museum, then here are some basic things that you need to take note of. Or if you like to document about food, then I have some ideas on how you can do that. So it's basically an all-in-one guide on travel journaling and how to make the most out of your travels. Also, there is a section there where I talk about honing your habit or how often should you travel journal, how to archive. These are things that are so hard to come by. So I do share all the nuggets of wisdom I've learned from traveling extensively and journaling along the way. So that is the totality of the book. And I also share, I think, other ways that you can document. Like I do have vlogs. I also take photos and how these all like work in conjunction with the whole idea of travel journaling. Okay. Well, I know I can't wait to get that book. So I'm I'm putting it in my shopping cart. 
I, okay, I have some questions for you about the publishing process because I know we have a lot of listeners who maybe I love talking about the publishing process. Oh, good. I okay. think it's it's not it's not as talked about. No, it's online, not. It's so. not. People have no idea, and I am sure you know a lot. Also, so it'd be nice to I do, to but dive I, into I, everything that. I learned, I've learned uh, like in this year, <laughs> like I. So, <laughs> one thing that people don't know about, because I definitely didn't know about, is how you have to actually write a book proposal in yeah. order to get a book published, and it's basically a document that's could be as long as the book. So could you tell us what a book proposal is? Okay, so in my case, I have had books that I actually didn't have to write the proposal. But being the Capricorn I am, I'm going to make a a pitch deck to show them, okay, this is what you'll expect from me, just so we're like clear on both ends. The recent one that I did for a travel journaling book, they did ask me to write a table of contents. Because Quart already gave me like, okay, we know what you want to talk about. This is travel journaling. But can you flesh it out into five chapters and we'll see how this could work, right? Because they also want to see, of course, from the business side of things, like, will this book make sense? Will people actually buy this? Is this something they want to read and and buy and like invest their time and energy into, right? So I did work on a table of contents. It was so tiring because you have to have basically an idea of what the whole book is about without even writing it right, right. yet, right? You, have, you to have to trust yourself. Write, you have to write a summary of a chapter that you haven't written yet. Exactly. So I think that took me like so long also to do maybe like two, three weeks because I had to wrap my brain into like, okay, I can talk about this, but is this actually possible to be converted into a long paragraph of like how to's? Because the the writing I do is more of like, I would like to call it art technique, you know, step by step. And this always has to involve a certain level of like, how can I write this out where the reader understands? Because when I say things like Trouder's Notebook or like collage or ephemera, they're like, what is that? You know, I have to take that, like I have to hold their hand along the way. And so those are things we kind of also tapped into. So there's like a pager about like definition of terms, you know, stuff like that. So they they do know. But yeah, basically it was a book proposal. That was a how I did my book proposal, I think in general, it's basically this document where you talk entirely about what to expect and what this book is about. And I think I did fill up this like a few years before. There was a book proposal where I had to do like a list of similar titles or like mm-hmm. possible competitors just so we can understand like if this has a market. I'm going to go deep into marketing here. But generally, that's how the book proposal works out okay so first of all i'm a capricorn too oh my gosh when's yes. your birthday um january 14th okay mine's de- in december but yeah okay fellow capricorn yes mm-hmm. okay so backing up i just want to also have people understand that you already had a relationship with the publisher exactly and you didn't go through an agent is that correct you don't no. have an agent negotiating no. for you okay so mm-hmm. for for most people just just so you know you need an agent to introduce you to publishers and the agent is going to want to see the book proposal. So you actually have to write the proposal in order to get an agent in the most typical path. And if so, Abby already had a relationship with the publisher. So she didn't, I'm assuming you didn't have to include like about the author in your. No, uh, no, no. So normally in a, proposal, you would have Mm -hmm. to have kind of, it's almost like the about me page part of your, so if you think about it in the art world, it's kind of like having the about me and an artist statement. So you have the about me, which is really not so much about you, but why you're the person to write this book and what your platform is like, you know, who you're going to sell it to. They also want to know about the audience so, Abby, you may or may not have included this in your proposal. So, who is the audience for travel journaling? You might have included your current audience on YouTube or in stats. Is that correct? You concluded that sort mm-hmm. of things. Okay. And then, you know, what is the demand for it? In, in my proposal, I did have to say, you say who are the competing titles, but you also have to say, well, if we already have these books about things that are similar, why is your book going to be? Yeah, different. it's like a USP or you, like single proposition, yes. unique single proposition. Unique yeah. selling proposition. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, no worries. 
So Abby, did you say how your, so how is your book different from other travel books or art journal books? Oh, actually I forgot to mention, right? So in 2019, Quarto had already contacted me about this book, which is funny because I was like, of course, I would love to write it. And then the project fell through. They probably predicted the pandemic. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> it just it was just like, okay, we decided to pull out, I think, the marketing. Because usually what happens is I have an acquisition editor, acquiring editor. Yes. And she is the person I talk to. And then we pitch this to the marketing. And then they see if there is a market fit for this, right? So, you know, the project didn't pull through. And I was like, okay, it's fine. I've been traveling the, that whole year. But I did write on my notes because I, I have this thing where I try to put like some goals or things I want to do in my notes app on my phone, just kind of like a soft manifesting kind of thing. And I did write that if I had to write another book, I think the only thing that I would probably say yes to is travel journaling because that's the next thing that I really want to talk about and share a lot of insights about. So early in 2021, I got an email from the same editor and she said, when you know we're exploring the idea of a travel journaling book again, would you be on board? We think you're the perfect person for it. We couldn't find anyone else to do it. And I was like, of course, you know, I think this is this is really a green light. And yeah, I think, okay, that's a good question though. I would say I don't see. So usually when I when I write a book or like I get into a project that involves books, I always ask like, is there someone better who could do this than me? I don't want to sound like this is a very like pride thing. It's more like I tried to analyze my skills and where all of this came from, like my experience with travel, my journaling skills, like how I've been doing this for... I actually do travel journaling as a big hobby. It's it's always something that I just was drawn to when I started. So I did not see it as a job opportunity at all. And then now that it's like, it came into me at this point and I feel very comfortable like doing it as a job, kind of. So I was like, you know, I think it makes sense that I do this. I think I can do it. I think I am capable to take on this job. I think a lot of friends have told me also that, you know, I don't know anyone who can work as hard as you with a book. A book is a long project. It's a big commitment, right? It takes up a whole year minimum to just work on it get things together organize the content send it to publisher do the marketing and I've done this many times you know I've had many books but every book is always different for me and I think yeah with travel journal I was like okay this is my seventh book it's also my seventh year being a full-time artist I think it's time (laughs) so yeah, I, I don't know how to say how I'm... Be- I don't want to say I'm better than I- other people. I just feel like travel journaling has a really special place in my heart. And I really would like to share that with other people and with others who would want to know more about it, right? I think you were lucky that it got delayed because if this book exactly. got released in 2020, people would have been like, we can't travel. I don't, exactly. You know, but we're now, not buying that. Right. Now, people, even if they aren't traveling yet, they are so hungry for experiences, even to do it like you said at the beginning of this interview, how when it was the pandemic, you would watch television of other people's travels just to dive into your zines or into your book on travel journaling. It's such a great escape. So I'm so happy that you have written this book. I think it definitely is going to serve a lot of people. Okay, Abby, we're about to wrap up. I don't think I asked you all the questions on my list, but most of them. It's okay. <laughs> all right. I know you have a gift for my listeners. What do you have for them? Yeah. So I have a free travel journaling toolkit in my newsletter. So this includes an excerpt of the book. I think the one included is how to start a travel journal, just so you know anyone can like get into it and learn more about the book. I also have a couple of digital downloads for collage, for travel journaling, for just journaling in general, and also an ebook on journaling, like general journaling, creative journaling. So I have all of that in a nifty little, I think it's like zip file or something. And you get that when you join our mailing list. So my mailing list, I call it midweek mail. I try to send a letter every midweek and I 
call my subscribers my inbox buddies because they find me in their emails and I mostly write about my somehow my life in Berlin but also like some realizations I have a my first love is writing actually which makes sense that's why I have books so I would like to share this with your listeners and they can access the free toolkit and subscribe to the newsletter by going to abc.com slash mail. Okay. So Abby is A-B-B-E-Y and C is spelled S-Y and dot com forward slash, you said mail? Yes, mail. Okay, perfect. We will also include the links to all those places that we've mentioned so far in the show notes, shulmanart.com forward slash 194. And don't forget, if you like this episode, you'll have to check out my free mindset playlist. We've curated the podcast episodes that focus on managing your mind. So if you liked what we talked about today, you're going to love that too. So go to shulmanart.com forward slash playlist. And also, if you want to get the list of art supplies I use in my own art journal practice, you can get that. Just go to shulmanart.com forward slash journal. Yep, it is a freebie. Alrighty, Abby, do you have any last words for my listeners before we call this podcast complete? Sure. I would like to, I was thinking what to say between my two mantras, but I think this makes more sense. So I have two mantras. Actually, first one is always be creating because it's a play around my name, you know, ABC, ABC. So that's where it came from. So always that's be so creating. Cool. I'm so glad you explained yeah. that to me. I didn't realize that. That's awesome. It's a, it's a little inside joke. I think someone just pointed out that, hey, your name is like ABC, like the alphabet. And then I did lettering for a while. So it's like, wow, this is all like on brand. Did you plan this? I'm like, no, it, it just made sense, right? So I always like to say always be creating, usually at the end of my videos or when I like end my letters and stuff, because I always like fostering the idea of creating anything and making something right and staying inspired but I also would like to share enjoy the journey because I think everyone's creative journeys are so so different and so unique and so interesting and I think if we fail to see how great our journey is like now then we won't be able to enjoy it as we go along so enjoy the journey just you know live in the moment and really embrace every part of it the good the bad and all these like little things that make it great okay thank you so much for being with me here today thanks miriam sure and thank you my friend also for being with us we will see you the same time same place next week stay inspired thank you for listening to the inspiration place podcast Connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash shulmanart, on Instagram at shulmanart, and of course, on shulmanart.com.